Victoria, welcome back to Worldwide Exchange. Um, let me ask you a broader question rather than the short-term stuff. There will be a PP, post-pandemic world. How will investing change in that new world? You know, I really think you're looking at a paradigm shift, Brian. Um, we're looking at this kind of pre-corona, after-corona. Uh, I think there's some behaviors that are just going to shift and not come back. And we look at that, that it's going to be a little bit of a drag on, on numbers and a drag on earnings going forward. Uh, you have over 48 million people who are over the age of 65. That's about 15 percent of the population. If they change their behavior, plus any at-risk people, plus anybody that are nervous, you could really see a drop in, in some of the growth we're expecting. We do expect to move forward, but it's kind of like we're moving forward with a, an anchor or a broken leg. It's just going to be a little slower and a little tougher as people have their behaviors changed. And we really see it as a full-time paradigm shift. Work from home is going to put some pressure on some sectors of the market. And it's just going to be different. Not necessarily it's the end of the world. It's just different. Yeah, and maybe fewer companies that benefit in that new environment. So who are those companies, Victoria? Where are the best opportunities that you and your team see right now? Right, right. Broadly, we are all about USA, kind of like Warren Buffett, bet on the USA, big quality growth. Uh, we definitely are looking at companies with good cash flow and dividends. Um, one company we really like that's a little out of consensus, but we like IBM. Uh, one of the reasons is they've got that new CEO. He's a paradigm shift. He came from the cloud side. He believes in the Red Hat acquisition, and he's going to push them more towards uh, the hybrid cloud, towards the um, AI with Watson, which connects well into the health database and the health in infrastructure. And they're going to pay you 5.3% dividend yield, and in a sub 1% treasury world, that's great. So if you know, I know IBM has to catch up a little bit, get rid of some legacy business, but we certainly like where IBM's going, and, and we don't discount the catalyst of the new CEO. Another company we like is Amazon. I mean, I think almost everybody likes Amazon. They had a bit of an earnings miss. I actually love the way Bezos came out with his earnings. You know, you want to might want to take a seat. We're going to have to invest a little bit. But I think they might steal more grocery than people realize, and, and they're going to be able to potentially pick up more retail as brick and mortar suffers. You know, you saw J. Crew and some of the other retail start to uh, pull back. And then our kind of winner in the clubhouse of the uh, pandemic sweepstakes, per se, is uh, Teladoc. We really like that company. Uh, telehealth is something that was uh, a growth market anyway. And then we're going to look to see them as the leader. They've already got great uh, partners with InTouch Health, United Health, CVS Health, and they're going to continue to grow. And so we see tele telehealth as a, a part of the market that was already growing, and the pandemic yeah. just accelerated it. You know, clearly not worried about the, the, the stock price rising there. Victoria, very quickly, when, when we look at the landscape, I'm you know, doing analysis, talking to CEOs. Seems like a really tough road for the commercial real estate companies, particularly ones that are based in the Northeast. People here may not return to work in New York this year. Are the REITs to be avoided at all costs? REITs, I mean, there are a few like American Tower or something that's a technical REIT, but not commercial real estate. Definitely REITs that are mall based or are heavy in commercial real estate, especially in the Northeast. I mean, you saw JP Morgan just come out saying they may uh, work from home might be something they're adopting. So I think there's a lot of pressure on REITs. Obviously, consumer discretionary is a pretty hard sector right now. Energy is a little bit tough. Um, and then financials, with everybody a little concerned on what might happen with defaults. But I think REITs, if you're extremely picky, you might be able to bottom feed. But you need to know what you're owning and the potential effects on commercial real estate, as well as potentially student yeah. housing.